Well, we're almost there. Are you excited? There is one more thing we need to cover about the control room, and it's unfortunately the source of much confusion for people who are either new to the control room or don't understand it very well. And I'm going to cover it now, and that is this mysterious control room overview. All this is is a signal flow diagram that shows you exactly what signal is going where and how you can select what's happening. So all this provides you is a visual representation of how the signal is flowing through the control room if you're inclined to uh, really study it. But also it gives you quick access to a lot of the functions that we've already discussed. So let's, for example, say you want to turn on talkback. Well, there's the talkback input right there. And in the control room mixer, we would turn it on by hitting this button and turning it off again. We can also turn it on in the control room overview by hitting this button. You'll notice that it's turned on now. And I can turn it back off. And same, I can choose the external input I want to use either in the control room overview by checking this or this, or I can go over to the control room mixer and check this or this. You can see they actually correspond to one another. And so it's the same all around. If I want to choose external inputs to go to the Studio One, I would choose this. Notice that now I'm chose, I've, I've selected the external input as a source in my Studio One channel. If I want to go back to my aux sends, I just choose this. Again, we go back to our aux sends. Now, since Studios three, four, and f or 2, 3, and 4 are not uh, enabled right now, they're grayed out in the control room overview. So they're not available. If you want them to be available, of course, you have to add them in the VST connections. But all this is the same thing. So if I want the main mix to go to my headphones, I just select that. It's just like selecting this button in the control room mixer. So all of this is very, this, this is the same exact functions we've already learned, it's just laid out in a slightly different way. So some people will find this useful, some people will find it redundant, and it doesn't really matter, but it is there. So I thought I would go over it so that you can understand what it's for and what you might be able to use it for. And with that, I've concluded my main presentation of the control room in Cubase. But there is one other thing I want to touch on, and that is the wonders and pitfalls of direct monitoring, especially as it relates to the Cubase control room. So I'll meet you in the next video.